you might have seen this video going around of uh, reporter Kevin Vasey, TV reporter for uh, News 12 Long Island, uh, being berated by Trump fans. Take a look. Thanks. I'm just trying to get by on the sidewalk, that's all. Well, you shouldn't be here, you fake news. You stopped, you stopped airing the Trump briefings and you keep airing Cuomo briefings. Go home, Traitor. you fake news. Fake Go home. News. You're destroying something in Long Island. You are the enemy of the people. You are fake news. You are the we enemy. We all know it. You are fake news. We know that your liberal agenda. We know you want to keep your job. We get it. You're not getting advertiser you dollars in right now. You want to you're not going to answer. You're so there. you're just going to go you live. Yes, you get I a am getting a paycheck. I'm very happy, Donald but Trump other people are not getting paychecks, and that's they're not getting. You used to be a good channel at one time. You allow people. I don't know what happened to you. Okay, um, so uh, <laughs> that was something. What what really struck me about that, Brett, was that um, it wasn't the individual things that anyone at that protest was saying to this individual. Uh, it was that they were all saying something. Like, is he is he like the Michael Jordan of Long Island? Everyone knew who he was. Everyone had something that they were prepped to say to this reporter. It was the whole protest became about the fact that a member of the media was covering it. And again, if you're organizing a protest, ostensibly, you want media coverage. There's so much bad about that. There's so much it proves to me. One, just that whenever you're at a place brimming with such vitriol and then you see a kid near the mom who is losing it at some guy... The looks on all those kids' faces are you watch neural pathways being forged. Kids who cross-reference what mom tells them to do on a normal basis, like don't yell at don't yell at people, don't be mean, be kind, which I'm sure she tells her kid, against what's happening now, which is mom just berated a stranger. And everyone around here is so mad and angry. Mm -hmm. It's gotta be terrifying to that kid. And the and also, this kid's going through an already terrifying situation. Yeah, and not, not understanding uh, what's going on. It's disturbing. It is so wildly disturbing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just the... Like, I, I don't know Kevin VC. I don't know News 12 Long Island. Uh, if you are in the chat and you follow it, if he is routinely insane or offensive or something... Like, if there is anything that justifies this uniform enraged deranged reaction then i would love to know what it is um i'm assuming the thing that has caused it is the fact that these people have been trained over the course of their lives in a general sense but certainly over the past few years by trump that if anyone tells you anything that makes you even briefly uncomfortable you do not have to accept it it doesn't matter yeah. if it comes from a scientist or a professor or a doctor, a member of the media, anyone whose job it is to understand things and communicate a more accurate understanding of reality, those people are your enemy and you don't have to trust them. And in fact, you can make yourself feel really good by just attacking them in a deranged fashion. That's what they've been trained to do and so that's what they're doing. They go to these protests to tell people that small businesses are, are essential or whatever, but mainly to attack the people that they hate. But we still see them suffering the consequences and some of them change their tune. There's there's so much internal 
problem with their logic. But we, we're covering on uh, Young Turks later today. There are multiple instances. Like there was a woman at a Trader Joe's who went and yelled at someone, which yeah. already it's hilarious, yelling at someone in a Hawaiian shirt that you're mad at them. Yeah. He's, he's, <laughs> chill, he's having a chill day. You, don't, you, you lose the moral high ground berating someone behind whom is a coconut carved to look like a monkey. Um, <laughs> but yelled at him and said, I don't need to wear a mask. And wouldn't you know it, after that's done, she is now sick. There's yeah. a Uber driver or a rideshare driver in Jupiter, Florida, who said he didn't take it seriously. Now he is sick and he wishes he took it seriously. And that is the the muscle they don't have, which is the ability to empathize, the ability to take things as a whole and rationally appraise them and yeah. and live their lives according to the conclusions they make based on on what the situation dictates a reasonable person to do. Mm-hmm. But they don't want to be reasonable. They want to feel right. And that's the problem. And I will say this about local news. This is a local news guy. And I'm sure they know their local news guy because people like this, most people anyway, before there was Facebook, the there was an, a, a hole in their um, understanding of the world that was filled by local news. That's how you got that extra bit of something to talk about with your friends about what's happening. It was a robbery, a burglary, a, a, a kid who was kidnapped. You got the local news that that filled that void for you. But now that has been filled with crazy Trump psychophant news content. And we have this this service that we're trying out here at TYT. It's it's a, a service that just kind of shows you what's trending on the internet, not just Twitter, but specific articles that are doing well. And the ones that pop the most are these ones that just go out to like the Daily Wire and the Daily Caller because that is where all that vitriol is concentrated and it gets a bump. And instead of things needing to happen out in the world for us to see them, for that to be our perception of how the world really is, Mm -hmm. it's just fed fake ideas of what the world actually is and into these little small media pockets. Yeah. And then those are poached and amplified on a national scale, trying to turn that into people's perception of what's actually happening when it was all manufactured from the, from the get go. Yeah. Um, what, just one thing I want to respond to, uh, in defense of the woman at the Trader Joe's, um, she now has the symptoms. She does not appear to take it seriously though. <laughs> Like she no, still she seems to not take it seriously. Um, but yeah. And, and just as a reminder, she's the most recent example of this of I don't need this. It's all a hoax. It's made up um, and then gets sick. But you had um, there's uh, someone who was, uh, you know, against the rules, cutting hair in New York, who's now sick. Yeah. And that look, for, I'm sure for economic reasons, but but the warning was accurate. And again, I hope this person ends up being fine. But the people who were I forget which state it was, but one of the organizers of the lockdowns got sick and all the pastors saying that they had, you know, the power, the blood of Christ or whatever, and then they ended up getting sick and many of them died. Like, like you can't, you can't stubborn away the virus. That just doesn't work. That's not and how And the it last works. little bit is there's this libertarian streak in them that's like, don't tread on me. But it, they, they forget that everyone is a me. Mm-hmm. Everyone, you're, you're, you're treading on them. You're treading on other people. That's the reason we have the laws you agree with is to protect you. Yeah. Everyone is an individual. And we have made these decisions because as much as they want to say it's like the flu, more people have died from this than died from the flu this year. So it's much, much worse. And those smaller numbers are the direct result. They could be much, much higher if not for the actions of people putting the restrictions in place that you are complaining about. Yeah, I mean, God God only knows how bad it would be today if we had never – Can you, what, And your dear leader is claiming credit 000? for that. Well, yeah, and your dear and, and Trump is trying to take credit. He literally tweeted a brag saying everyone is should thank their lucky stars for me, the president, for making the the governor's regulations happen and the lowered numbers happen. Well, yeah. those things that lowered the numbers that he's now taking credit for, for which previously he had literally said outright, I don't take responsibility for them. Those mm. things that that yielded that success for him are things that governors who disagreed with him put in place. And he's telling them to stop. Yeah. Because again, doesn't take responsibility.
Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Cast or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.